Oh, hello, good talk. How are we all doing? Right, lesson seven. Yes, if you are ahead of the curve and are seeing my videos early, you will notice. And we've already had a lesson seven. For those of you who haven't spotted that, then don't worry too much. I'm re-recording it. It was a bit of a bit of a rubbish lesson. It all all went uh, all went a bit wrong, really. Uh, with interruptions and FSX being a bit weird. So, um, yeah, we're going to try it somewhere else. Um, for those of you who didn't see it, don't worry. You've not missed anything. I'm going to delete the uh, the old video and this will replace it. And this will be a million times better. So what are we doing? Um, as you will have seen from the title, LDA approaches localizer directional aid. So we've already talked about the localizer being a component of the ILS. So localizer plus glide slope gives you ILS effectively. Um, and how the localizer is effectively like a VOR, but with a, a narrower field of view. It's not 360 degrees um, and it's more high precision, so on and so forth. Um, so... We, we use it purely for approach onto runways. What we've looked at so far is where that localizer is one on the center line of the runway, and two, the radial that you dial into is the same as the heading of the center or the course of the center line of the runway. So you fly along that line. And that line is exactly the same line as the sense line of the runway. But that's not always the case. Most of the time it is. Very, very often it is. But a few times it's not possible. And here uh, at Vagar in the Faroe Islands, um, which is <laughs> go north of Scotland and keep going north until you get really cold and you hit the Faroe Islands, um, you can see here, if we just look at the train, don't worry about any of the black lines or anything just yet. We can see the runway here. If I just take my little marker off, there's the runway, this little uh, oblong uh, rectangle here. And if we sort of imagine the center line coming out, it cuts through this mountain. Now, being the Faroe Islands and pretty much Scandinavia, that mountain's not very small. Um, in fact, it's not very small indeed. Um, <laughs> excuse the horrendous scenery. I don't actually have scenery for her. But that would get in the way of a normal approach path. So we have to sort of thread the eye of the needle through the gap and then at last minute turn. But what it means is we can't have the localizer on the center line, so we'd hit the mountain. But why can't we have the localizer on the start of the runway and just have the radial coming out at a slight um, angle? Well, in theory, we could. Um, that would be, that, that happens. There are airfields like that. But in this particular instance, that is not possible either, because if we did have the radial coming out, we'd probably hit this mountain here. Or we'd certainly get far too close to it on that side. That one's not quite as dramatic, uh, but it certainly would get in the way, and we, you know, our wingtips would be getting a bit too close for comfort. So the only way we can get a line threading through between these two mountains with sufficient distance is to actually put the localizer not on the center line of the runway at all, and not have the 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 radial on the center line of the runway either. And that's called an offset localizer. And as we can see, it's actually offset from the center line of the runway. Now, I'm not 100% sure whether we'll even see it here. Um, yeah, nothing but a good bit of preparation. But effectively, it's sort of over here somewhere, but we can't see it in FSX for some, uh, for some reason. And to be honest, probably wouldn't expect it unless I have proper scenery for here. We're just on default. Um, so what we can do is we can pretend that this is a normal approach. All right. We can fly along this course of 111 on this offset localizer. 
and fly dead straight along there, as if it was going to take us all the way down to the runway. The difference being, at a certain place in space, we then cancel. We then stop following the localizer altogether, and if all is well and we can see the runway and everything's, you know, everything's looking good, then we can just do a last minute, very gentle turn back on the runway. Fantastic. So if we look at the side profile, so this is our descent. Now this is a localizer approach, so there is no glide slope. We have to do that ourselves. We don't get glide slope. That's why it's a localizer directional aid. Um, rather than an ILS directional aid. Um, you do get them with glide slopes as well. Um, again, they're not hugely common, and that this whole setup isn't hugely common anyway. Uh, so I've not found one of those, although I've got a funny feeling Innsbruck has one, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, what is nice is... At this particular airfield, we've got a couple of NDBs. So like we had at East Mids, there's an NDB on the approach and there's an NDB on the exit, which would also be the approach if we were coming in the other way. So if we overfly this NDB, we're more or less, not completely on it, but we're more or less on the localizer where we want to be. And as long as we're roughly on a heading of 111, then we're also sort of flying along it. Um, good enough that we can get a decent enough lock and stick the autopilot in or just follow it by hand, whatever, um, and then we can fly along. We have some points in time here that have been noted. So D, the DME, we know about DME, distance measuring equipment. So that is when we are 3.2 miles away from the radio. And we'll see that in the cockpit, and it'll say how far away we are. We've also got one at DME2, and we've also got one at D1.7 miles. And if we look at this, then there's 3.2 mark there, and, you know, roughly we should be about 1,400 feet. Um, at DME2, we should be about 900 feet. And at DME1.7, we should be at M feet. M is our minimums, and here is nice and easy. It's not different depending on your aircraft type or anything like that. There is one decision altitude or one decision height, uh, and that is 820 feet. So here we should be at 820 feet, and at that point we make the decision whether we're going to continue and land, in which case we follow the dashed line, which will take us onto the runway. Or if we decide, no, nope, we can't land, then we go around. And the go around is going straight out to this NDB. And then we swing a 180, go around the other side of this mountain and try again. Now I've done one practice of this, one. Um, I just stopped with about six feet to go on uh, the runway, on the runway runoff area, actually. Because uh, I was coming in a bit quick. It's a, the pilot workload is reasonably high. It's not disgusting, but it's reasonably high. Um, and you'll see here we've got MM. MM is the middle marker. Now, this is a type of beacon, radio beacon, that we've not talked about yet. Typically at airfields, you will have three marker beacons, an inner, a middle, and an outer marker. Here, we have a middle marker, and it's nicely marked on this map. And there's also one, you can sort of just see the, a similar sort of symbol right under the bottom here. This is the outer marker. Now, they don't have, well, they do have a frequency because it's a radio, but it's not a frequency we need to key in or tune into or anything like that. All it does is if we are directly above that marker, then we'll get a little bleep in the cockpit. And you'll hear that um, when we do the flight now. The outer marker, not overly relevant. It just sort of gives you an idea. Oh, yeah, I'm on top of the NDB. We've got an NDB there anyway. So, yeah, it, it's not particularly relevant here. The middle marker just happens to be very relevant on this one. And we can see the middle marker is also marked here at 1.1 miles. 
the 1.1 here. The middle marker seems to be pretty much the point at which you actually want to start your turn to get yourself onto the center line of the runway. Because at the moment, up until this point, we're not on the center line. We're on this offset localizer. So as soon as we get the bleep from the middle marker, you know, that's, a, that's the time we want to turn. Certainly no later. I went a smidge late in the practice uh, and I just had to do a bit of a wiggle to get back on the sensor line. So I'll be a little bit better on that. So that's pretty much what's going on here. So let's jump into the sim. Here we are, Scandinavian 1279. Uh, we're in the de Havilland Crash 8 Q400, sorry, Dash 8. Nicknamed the Crash 8, of course. You'll find out why. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I read it was a, a Flyby captain. Said, <laughs> now ex Flyby captain, of course. Said, you don't land the Dash 8, you fly it into the ground. And I'll be exercising that advice, as we'll see today. Hmm. Oh, no, no. Right, so this is going to be a very, very quick flight. Um, so this will be hopefully quite a short video. I've keyed in the localizer 109.1 there, and it's actually showing up as ILS on here, but anyway, it's localizer. I've also keyed in the two NDBs. Uh, the one we're initially going to be going for on departure is on 348, and that's what we got active here. And 337 is the one near where that outer marker is. And we can just flip-flop between the two. I've put that on ADF2. Right, let's just get my trim sorted. So I've got a fighting chance of actually taking off. There we go. Lovely. So if we have a look on here then. We're keyed in on 109.1 for the localizer. And we've got the course keyed in, which was 111. Currently, we're 0 0.2 miles away. So we've got the DME. Oh, you know what? You know what would be a really good idea? If my fat head wasn't covering it. There we go, 0 0.2 miles, so you can see that. And we've also got 0 0.2 down here. That's normally where I look for it. Now, because we're using, it shows as a VOR, that's effectively what it is. Um, using that, and this is the blue symbols on here. And we're familiar with this. Last time we saw it, it was yellow. Or in the Cessna, it was actually a white physical bar, because it's not a dig digital display. Um, because we're using that, we can't use ADF-1, because we're, we're, we can only show one thing. So that's why I keyed it into ADF-2. So the green uh, identifier here is ADF-2. And ADF-2, if we remember, 348 kilohertz down here, that's the outbound, as it will be for us, NDB. So we'll keep an eye on those. Enough chit-chat. Should we get in the air? I think we should. So... Let's get this party on the road. Let's spin up the engines. There we go. Lovely jubbly. So props will go to max. Flaps are already set. Lovely. Bleeds can come to min. This isn't going to be a masterclass in how to fly the Dash 8 well. Um, if anyone knows of anyone who can fly this well, please let me know. Because holy moly, it's not easy. Um, altitude, we want 3,700 feet is the altitude on the chart. So that's what we'll do, 3,700. And I'm immediately going to key in, sorry, vertical speed. Uh, in fact, no, I'm not. I'm chatting nonsense here. Ignore that. I'm going to go to pitch halt. There we go. Um, and I'm going to set about 10 degrees nose up. And our heading which we can see this little blue bug here. I'm going to set to, what does it say on the chart? 123. There we go, 123, which is more or less the runway heading, and that should more or less take us straight out to the NDB anyway. And we've already got the NDB, so, so that's pretty good. So, engines are on end top, normal takeoff power. Uh, PTU is on. Let me just do a quick check that we're not going to crash and burn on the first instance. Flaps are five. Uh, the throttle guard can come away. 
that's all looking good. The marker is on. Um, weather radar, we don't need that. We haven't got real world weather and we are not flying online. Decision height, 820 feet. So that's keyed in up there. Uh, that's all set. Our pressure's good. Quick check of the overhead. Yeah, bleeds men. That's all looking fine. La, 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 la. I've put the heating on, although it's probably not actually required, but uh, there we go. Brakes away, and ease the power. And this Dash 8 has got some proper torque. Oh, listen to that sound. Noise. Oh, hello. Try and keep it straight on the runway. Has anyone flown in a Dash 8? In Fly B or whatever? 120 knots, we'll rotate the round about that. Autopilot can go on. Excellent, and we get this beautiful view here. The gear up. Oh, spent ages getting that view set up. Absolute beauty. Proper nerd rage there. Alright, I'll try and keep this view up. Each time I go to an outside view, I lose this. Um, Don't sink. I'm not going to sink. That's the middle marker. But that's the middle marker if we were coming in the other way. So I should turn that off, really. So that's what it sounds like. Sorry if you had headphones on. Um, Serves you right. That's a bit mean, wasn't it? Uh, oh, we're not actually on. So, out and heading. Out cell, please. Thank you kindly. And we'll go to IAS hold. And we'll go up to... Oops. 180 knots will be plenty. So, that's looking good. We can go to rated power on the props. That's automatically put maximum climb on there. Fantastic. All looking right good. Ping, 1,000 feet to go to what we've selected. Outsell is on. This aircraft loves disabling outsell. That basically means when you hit that altitude, lock in on it. Each time you change the autopilot, it's, it clears outsell, which is really <laughs> blooming annoying. Um, Okay, and we can swing straight round actually, and let's get ourselves on that uh, rough downwind leg. Around about 290, I think, from my quick test flight. Uh, okay, so we've leveled out, so that will cause us to accelerate, and we're well over 200 knots now, so flaps absolutely should be up. Hmm. So if I show you what it's looking like at the moment, there's us down here. Um, so we're just doing this turn. We'll come up and then we'll intercept the ILS. Well, we'll fly into the NDB. Let's use it. Why not? And when we uh, hit that outer marker that you can just sort of see the grey sort of, uh, what does it look like? It looks like a glass lens from a, um, from, you know, eyeglasses. Um, but anyway, when we overfly the NDB and we know what that looks like, we should be pretty much on it. And then we can lock on to the uh, localizer. So that's what it sort of looks like there. Um, because I did version one of this video at night time, uh, I turned the gamma up and I don't like that. So bear with me a second. I'm just going to kill that gamma. Colour correction. Oh, there we go. That's a bit better. Excellent. Okay. So this island here, that's what we saw on the charts, that's where the NDB is, and that is also where the outer marker is. So we can flick over on the ADF, just double press on there. So now 
we're looking at, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, but the inbound, as we're going to call it, NDB. And as we can see, the green arrow is pointing slightly off the nose to the right, and that's slightly off the nose to the right. So it looks like we're pointing in the right sort of place. And we've got a bit of a lick on here, so I'm going to pull the throttles back a smidge, because uh, we will need to slow down a bit for the turn. Nose comes up as the speed comes back to maintain altitude, fantastic. That's what we want. And it'd be nice if we could get flat five down on our base turn. We're currently downwind, the, oh yeah, you're not going to see the airfield, it's behind there. But anyway, this, uh, apart from the scenery looking absolutely terrible, because I don't have scenery for here, um, <laughs> try and put that out of your mind and have a look at the sort of angles that we're coming in on uh, when we get round the corner. You see, we picked up the localizer, it's saying the line is well off to our right hand side, and that's what we expect because the lo you know, that course for the localizer is all the way over here. So once the NDB is just past north, then we'll turn north. So that's more or less just past north. So let's swing our heading round to 360. There we go. And just to uh, verify that on the map so you can see what's going on. Uh, I've lost it. Come on, Streamlabs. There we go. So I was waiting for the NDB to be north of us. So that means we're going to come into the left because it takes time to turn. And then we'll swing right. All right. Happy with that? Good. Well, you can reply. <laughs> so the NDB is just very slightly off the nose to the right. So that's pretty much where I want it to be just eyeballing the map here. We're at 3,700 feet, which is what the chart says we should be at. Fantastic. And when we get almost at the island, we'll swing right for a 30 degree intercept. So 30, So if you've got your, which way is it? It's that way for you guys. We want to hit it at a 30 degree angle. Um, if you come in too sharp, then the aircraft has a hard time turning. Uh, or the autopilot has a hard time turning. So we want to be no more than 30 degrees off 111. So we'll add be 0.081, won't it? I'll probably turn a smidge early there, but uh, it's not the end of the world. Altitude, the next one is 1400 feet, so I can pre key 1400 feet in there. Aircraft won't do anything until I actually tell it. And we can see the uh, localizer needles coming in now. So let's just swing it round to 90. And we can arm approach. And straight away, lock up there, localizer. The aircraft knows it's a localizer. And I hope you could hear that 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 was a slightly different tone to the middle marker we uh, we heard on the outbound. So the outer, the middle and the inner all have slightly different sounds. Which is good. So, what if feather can come on? What's the speed doing? Yeah, we can happily take flat five. Um, just to get some drag and whatnot, let's uh, do some of that. Bleeds. Oh, bleeds are already on minks. I never took them off. Fantastic. So down we go. So once we at fourteen hundred feet at three point two DME. Currently at six point three DME. So I'm just only balling VS vertical speed eighteen hundred feet a minute, which is probably a little bit keen actually, but we'll be all right. So we're on the localizer look. Blue, arrow, blue needles right in the middle, near enough. And we've also got the diamond. No glide slope. A thousand feet to go. I'm just going to arrest that descent slightly. And we'll take flap 10, which will be our landing flap. 
So you can see if we're any further over to the right, this is getting a bit tasty, isn't it? Particularly that peak there. So we're bang on, look at the diamond, we're bang on the localizer here. And you can see the runway there, hopefully. I zoom in a smidge. So you see we're really not on the center line of that runway at all. Okay, so I'm taking manual control. Oh, you want joystick cam? Right, you will really see me stabbing this now. So next, we want 820 feet at 1.7 DME. Speed's good. 1,000 feet. And we're listening for that middle marker. Pretty much on the localizer here. Oh. And it gets twitchy as you get close in, of course. There's the middle marker. That's my turn cue. Middle box. In this middle case, box. not always. And continue. Five, Going a little bit quick. Yeah, turned a touch too late there. Localizer excess deviation. Yeah. One hundred. Yeah, I know. This is going to be terrible. Yeah. Oh, that was heavy. Yeah, we're not going to stop. Even with the brakes this thing has, with the props going in reverse. <laughs> oh no, we might. Oh, we've actually stopped earlier than I did on the last one, and I was doing about 10 knots faster. So, very, very heavy landing. That was not a good landing. Um, that would be a inspect the landing gear, absolutely. Uh, but anyway, hopefully from that you get the idea of what's going on with an LDA approach. If you're really interested in this sort of stuff, have a have a look around on uh, on YouTube. Um, and let's just put the spoilers away. There we go. Uh, there are plenty of videos of flight simmers and stuff doing LDA approaches. Um, I think Chewy has done one recently. I can't remember where it was now, actually. Uh, I think San, San Francisco has got one. Um, might have been there. But anyway, he, he does a really good job, actually, of, of the LDA. Um, much better than I did then. That was pretty shocking. But um, you get the idea. So that's another way that we can use a localizer, i.e. a radio navigational aid to get us into an airfield where it is not possible to have it on the center line of the runway. We've also talked about the markers. So the middle marker and the outer marker we've heard. So the middle marker's higher pitched, the outer marker is lower pitched. Guess what? The inner marker is even higher pitched. There isn't one here. But it's a real high pitch one and it's very very close to the start of the runway if there is one at that particular airfield as always questions comments and um, whatever down in the uh, doobly doo below and um i will see you on the next one that might well be it for the flight simmy stuff now for this course we're probably going to have to now get stuck into the flight planning phase and there'll be a little bit of maths um, not nothing too scary, um, I promise. Uh, but we'll get stuck into that, cover all that course content, which is quite a fair chunk of the module of Air Nav and Pilot Nav itself, actually. Um, and then we'll do a confirmatory couple of flights in the flight sim just to sort of wrap off the uh, the course. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one. Toodles.